welcome back now we are here in part 2 so you all saw basically in the part 1 video we just did the configuration set the topology of the overall network what they have asked for three routers two servers two switches and one pc we found four network four different networks and we also try to give the label properly so that we remember like there are four networks having this network addresses and accordingly we have configured every machine with their ip address now the next thing before you actually start with the practical like practicing ntp syslog or ssh those three protocols the very first thing you have to make sure that routing is possible between between all these machines that means this machine should be able to ping this machine on another network something like this okay of course every machine within the same network they will be able to ping it but we are asking for one machine to ping another machine which is on another network okay and that is not yet done that will be done using one protocol called ospf of course there are other solution also like static routing or rip protocol but we are preferring ospf here as a practical demand ospf stands for open shortest path first now i'll explain you the working of it so let's see first whether this particular server ntp server is able to ping this pc which is on the fourth network so from first network i'll try to ping some machine on the fourth network so let's see open the server go to command prompt okay and type the command ping 192.168.3.2 that is the ip address for that pc i'll try to ping and you will see the reply that destination host is unreachable if you try to ping something within the network of course you will get the reply let me show you let me ping the server syslog server which is on the same network so i'm trying to ping syslog server from ntp server so the ip address of syslog server was 192.168.1.3 zero was the network address one was given to the router Two was given to the NTP server and three was given to the Syslog server. So from two, I'm ping, pinging the three, like third machine, Syslog server from NTP server. Let's enter, and you will see that we are getting the reply successfully. So within the network, devices are connected, but now we want to have the connection throughout. So how to do that? So we'll be using OSPF protocol for it, and let's see what are the commands for it. Close this window. So how OSPF works? Okay, OSPF work area wise. Okay, so just for the reference, what I'll do, I'll just draw a rectangle here. So I'll consider this area, this big area. Okay, inside that you can see there are two networks, and all the three routers I'm including in it. I'll consider this area as area zero. Okay, as the OSPF says. Like area zero is a backbone of the overall network. Backbone of the overall network. So I'm totally relying on this area zero. This routers, three routers will be responsible of doing the routing of the packets from this network to another network and so on, something like that. Okay. So area zero is this. Okay. Remember. So in area zero, you all can see two networks are falling. And then similarly, we can have more areas as OSPF. mechanism says so we'll consider this area as area 1 and this area as area 2 if you are getting confused you can again you know go back listen to it Listen to me carefully once again, and come back to this particular position. So we are learning OSPF protocol. Through OSPF protocol, will work. Will be making connections happening between the networks, so that one machine on one network will be able to ping another machine on another network. That's what we want to achieve first before we actually start with the practical. So I've defined the areas. We'll be doing it with the OSPF protocol. So let's see how to do that. It's very simple, easy. There are simple commands are there. So let's jump jump to the R1, R1 router R1. 
So we are on the R1. Go to CLI tab. That is command line interface. Press enter. Enable it. EN. You are in the default mode. Get into the configuration mode. Connect T. Now we are in the configuration mode. Now we are in router R1. You all know. Router R1 is connected to two networks. You all can see. I hope you all will agree. R1 is connected to two networks. Am I right? The one network is 192.168.1.0 and another network is 10.1.1.0. Great. So now we'll configure the router using which protocol? OSPF. So type router OSPF. OSPF one. Like one is nothing but a process ID. You can even give ten or twenty, twenty-one, thirty, but remain. Make sure that process ID remains constant throughout while configuring all the three routers. So router OSPF one enter. So you are in the mode of configuration router. Now you have to define that this router is connected to which network. So you have to write network. Command is network. And this router is connected to which network? 192.168.1.0. This is one network, right? And this network, by looking at the diagram, you all will agree that this network belongs to area one. So just type area one here. Enter. Some error is there. Let me try it once again. Network 192.168.1.0. That's the network address. Yeah, I forgot one thing to mention. Along with the network address, you also have to mention the wildcard mask. That is the opposite of network mask. I hope you all remember. All the networks, okay. I kept the network mask constant. That was 255, 255, 255, 0. And what is wildcard mask? That is so opposite of it. That is 0.0.0.255. That's a wildcard mask. Now you will understand the reason. Like I don't have to actually remember the subnet mask of all the other different different networks different differently. So what I'll do? I'll just make it constant. I update it. So wildcard mask also remain constant throughout. So now remember the command network. I'm mentioning the network for the router R1. The network address one ninety two point one six eight point one point zero. That's the first network. It's wildcard mask, which is opposite of subnet mask zero point zero point zero point two fifty five, and then area one it belongs. Then enter. Now it's working fine. Router R1 is also connected to one more network. Just shift this, and I hope you all can see this network. This that is 10.1.1.0. So similarly, you can go ahead and fire one more command: network 10.1.1.0. And same, what was the wildcard mask? Now you can see it becomes easy for us if the sub network mask remains constant in all in all the network. So same same goes here: 0.0.0. 255 because here also I kept the subnet mask 255 255 255 zero and this belongs to area number zero right you all can see that this network belongs to area number zero and then click enter okay so both the networks for router R1 has been configured okay then click on like click end or exit you are done you are done with the router R1. Similarly, same way you have to do it for R2. R2 also have two networks, but both the network belongs to area zero only. So let's click on R2. Go to command line interface. Click Enter. Enable it. Get yourself into configuration mode. Config mode. After firing the command, Conf T. And now type router OSPF. The process ID was one. In our case, right? Next, you just have to define the network. So network, it is connected to 10.1.1.0. Wildcard mask is 0.0.0.255. 
area is zero. Enter. Similarly, one more. I'll just so sorry. Uh, I've pressed the wrong key. Like maybe I'll just press the backspace here. Yeah. Again, I'm in the same mode. So I'll do it for one more network. It is it is there. You all can see that is 10.2.2.0. So I'll just have the same command and I'll just change the numbers here so that it will get configured because I'm still in the configuration router mode. So one more network 10.2.2.0 wildcard mask 0.0.0.255 area 0 enter. So now we're done with this click end come outside close it and now the final router is remaining here this router which is also connected to two different networks. One belongs to area 0 and one belongs to area 2. So click on it, go to CLI, command line interface, enter, enable. Then get into configuration mode, conf T. Now write router OSPF1, enter. Like what is the process ID? Right network, it is connected to network. It is connected to 10.2.2.0. That's the first network on the left hand side. You all can see wildcard mass is 0.0.0.255, and the area it belongs to 0. Enter. One more network is there. It was loading. Loading is done. Great. Click enter. Again the same command but the network address will change which is there on the right hand side you, you all can see that is 192.168.3.0 wildcard mass remains same and this is area number 2 enter and we are done with the OSPF configuration of the routers so now if we try to ping now from one machine from one network like from area 1 to another machine on area 2 we should get the success message let's try so let's go to the NTP server now this one command prompt and uh, let me see if we are able to ping 192.168.3.2 which is a PC which is there in the area number 2 enter Request timeout, but still now you all can see after sending four packets, we are getting the reply from for the three packets. Again, let me try once more. We are getting the reply successfully. That means configuration of the routing now has been done successfully. So now we'll proceed to configure NTP server, syslog server, and SSH. Stay tuned. That's all guys from this video. If you really like this video, press like button and do subscribe to our channel. If any queries or suggestions, do comment below. For more such updates, follow us on Instagram and Facebook.